I'm Heather Bradbent. In this video, I'm talking about the importance of a practice journal. This is a very, very big secret of mine that I want to share with everyone that I found to be very helpful for me in my practicing. It started actually um, when I was in the university and I was struggling with a piece and my teacher kept asking me, did you practice this week? Did you practice this week? And I'm saying, yes, I practiced, I practiced, tears streaming down my face, I practiced, I promised I did, but I wasn't improving and I didn't know why. So I sat down and I took a piece of paper and I believe it was a Mendelssohn um, violin concerto that I was working on with him and I sat down and I wrote down every single measure that I had an issue. If I had a measure that I had an issue with intonation with the shift, if I had a measure that I had an issue with a bowing, bow distribution, all those different things, rhythm, double stops, anything technical, I wrote the measure, say measure 37, intonation between the shift and fifth and sixth position, something like that, okay? But very detailed. And then the next day, I would come back and only practice those measures over and over again with little itty bits. And that helped so much that when I went to my next lesson, my teacher asked me, what the heck did you do? Because <laughs> I made such huge improvement. So it's a, the secret is to be organized in your practice. A lot of times as artists and as musicians, we just want to just sit down and just play what we feel like at the time and you know whatever we want to work on and play it through the whole piece from the beginning to the end. And if we make a, make a mistake, we go back to the beginning to the end and that is not productive, effective practice at all. Not at all effective practice. So what I'm going to talk about is this practice journal and how to use it. First, with your piece, your concerto, your sonata, the unaccompanied Bach, whatever it is you're working on, orchestral excerpts, write your measure number in and the issue that you're having with it. So uh, I'm just checking in my journal here if I have some specific examples I can sh just uh, show you real quick. Okay, so this is the Serban Bach D minor I was working on. So measure 13, I had, there's a perfect fourth in measure 13 that had struggles with intonation. So I wrote perfect fourth in tow, and in tow is short for me for intonation. Uh, measure 25, chord break. I struggled with the breaking of the chord. And if you struggle with the breaking of the chord, watch my chord break video. It's very, very good, and I promise it will help you tremendously, okay? So, uh, measure 26, intonation of the A, fourth finger, okay? So I was very detailed in, in the measure numbers and what needs to be fixed. So that's what you want to keep in your practice journal. Number two, not only keep track of those measure numbers, you might have heard me talk a lot of times about using a timer. And you want to use a timer with your roadmap. Now, I'm going to show you my roadmap at this time. I was doing, this was many years ago, an hour and 15 on etudes alone every day. And uh, so this is how I broke it down. Now these are a lot of etudes. I was working on a lot of etudes at the time. So I had, uh, for, to break it down into an hour and 15, I had to do this. Shradiac double stops, five minutes. 16th notes, three minutes. Warm up, five minutes. Scales, five minutes. Double stops, 25 minutes. Dunas, 10 minutes. Set check bow work, 15 minutes. Shifting, 3 minutes. Kurgoff, 5 minutes. Fourth finger, 3 minutes. Up bow staccato, 3 minutes. So I had a lot of etudes and a lot of techniques I was working on all at the same time. And if I didn't have this roadmap, there's no way I would be able to stay organized and think, oh my gosh, okay, how am I going to get to everything today? I only have three hours to practice, an hour and 15 on etudes, an hour on concerto, an hour on sonata, however I was organizing it at the time. Um, actually, I'm looking here about how I worked out the pieces. So, and, and the other thing with this roadmap, some days you can fit more time in. Don't freak out and stress out and think, oh gosh, I gotta get six hours in a day or three hours in a day. Sometimes it's just not possible. Life happens. It's not possible to get that in. So what you want to do is schedule. Okay, think, okay, Tuesday, I really want to get to the gym. I have students. I have performances. So Tuesday is going to be a hard day to get my six hours in. So schedule Tuesday, Thursday, three hours. Schedule Monday, Wednesday, Friday, six hours. And now, obviously, these are just random numbers. <laughs> you can schedule an hour or 30 minutes. And not only schedule the time, not only think, okay, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm going to do 30 minutes. Schedule the exact time into your phone, okay, or your calendar, however you keep your calendar. If you have an iPhone, 
put it in the iPhone or smartphone or whatever, and then also put an alarm on there to say, hey, it's time, like five minutes before, it's time to get myself in the practice room, or put it at the end of the practice session, it's time to get out of the practice room, okay? So with a timer, if you actually use a kitchen timer, it's sitting right there and it's really loud. You physically move it to the right time, the three minutes or five minutes, and so then when it buzzes, it's a lot easier to hear. I've done both the alarm on my smartphone and a kitchen timer, and the kitchen timer seems to be more effective. Plus, if you find that you get the violin fuzzies, the kitchen timer will wake you up for sure. And that's really important. If you're finding that you're getting the violin fuzzies, stop the time and make it smaller. You're spending too much time on something if your brain is getting a little fuzzy or mesmerized, which is really easy to do sometimes in practice. Or if you find that you're starting to think about other things, then you're spending too much time on that technique, on that concept. So break it down. And this is really great for teachers to help their students organize and get everything in for the week. Okay, so practice journal, create your roadmap, Write everything that you're working on and divide it up with your time. Schedule it in your calendar and make sure to do what I did with the measure numbers. Okay, so you say stay very focused and exactly what you want to accomplish. Hopefully you found this video to be helpful. If you like the video, make sure to like the video. If you found it so helpful, share it with all your friends, all your violin friends, musician friends, because this applies to musicians in general. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you haven't yet, be sure to visit www.onlineviolin.net where I have tons of videos and blog posts to help you out. And if you have a request for a video, be sure to write in the comments below as well. If you do this and you find huge results, share. Share with the world. Share. Write in the comments below that, hey, I did this for a week and wow, I can't believe the results. It's amazing how much I improved. Okay? So remember, be true, be you, be and happy practicing with your practice journal.